here's some super cool pliers from yesteryear. Some Pennons 3234s. I actually looked up this patent number. You can just barely see it, which is 2600 512. Yep, that's it. And what's interesting about patents is when you look up patents on old tools, the image is versus the tool that you're actually holding in your hand with the patent number on it. This tends to be a little bit different and there just tends to be the slight modifications or changes in design. But on these particular compound adjustable pliers, these are exactly as pictured in the patent. 1948, the patent was when it was applied for. I think it was granted in 1951. Pennons was bought out by Proto and Proto actually continued making these as a 234s. And that's gonna be a much easier pair to find than these pennons. These aren't perfect. You, this screw here is actually supposed to be in the middle. And you can see how this is a little bit offset, but I'm not going to complain because these are not very common pliers. I really, I don't think Proto has made these for quite a long time. They may still make them, but I couldn't find the part number on their website. Didn't see them looking through their pliers. And I don't know who makes any other kind of pliers like this. There's, of course, things like the Nipex wrench pliers. But those are kind of offset where these... They're kind of a funky, they're kind of like an upgraded version of regular old slip, excuse me, slip joint pliers. I wish they would have made a set that actually had the bypass cutters and then this, you know, more coarse area. These just have uh, a standard tooth area. They could have easily had bypass cutters and they would have worked really well because of the compound action. So you can see what we have is three layers. This back jaw hinges there. We have a pin here and we have another pin offset here. Just uses a single sided D and so you have four positions which you can adjust. One thing I was gonna mention is in the smallest or the furthest forward position is where you get the most leverage as we can see these pins are the closest to the tip of the jaws. And you get a lot of force with these. I mean, these have a lot of gripping power because we can see how much this handle moves versus how little the jaws open. And when we go to the fully open position, we can see that the whole pivot moves further back. So actually, the wider the opening that you have, you're slightly reducing the compound action, but you still get plenty of force. I think the reason that these really aren't, Proto isn't making these anymore, is one, they're just more expensive. There's more machine work. You have to forge three parts for them. They have to be pretty expensive for a set of pliers. And secondly, I think there's some warranty issues because the the big issue is both of these pins have to be set in this center handle here because that's what's what doing the pivoting. And unfortunately, the backs of these little posts, these bolts, there's just not a lot of cross section of metal for them to be, you know, I don't know if those, these are actually forged into the center section of the handle or if they're press fit with like a little head or something, but I could see due to the nature of compound pliers that some, that they may have had issues with people just putting a lot of force on them and having these pins fail primarily coming out of the center section of the handle. Although I think for general use, it's really not going to be that big of an issue, but that's about the best that I can come up with because these seem like an amazing set of pliers. Really like the idea of just having a normal set of straight reach pliers that you can just grip on something and just have a tremendous amount of force with them being uh, compound. And I think they're just super cool. I like the fact that we have multiple adjustable positions. I like the fact that with like normal slip joints, when you're gripping something really hard, all the force is at the two little bumps. This is a double D shape. That's how you get the slip joint. But when you're gripping and putting force, it's right on the tips of the two bumps because, of course, when you're pushing down, it's the direction of force is right against the bumps. Or on these, we can see that this is on an angle here. So when you're using these and putting a lot of force on them, what we can see here is when we're operating them that this pin is still going this way. So rather than putting all the force right on the very tip there, it's putting it more into the pocket 
where it's a lot stronger and there's a lot less likelihood of it wanting to blow out the little tip for the adjustment. And I thought that was actually pretty darn neat. Once again, like the multiple sizes, and they have multiple adjustments here, four sizes, just because you don't get a lot of operational range because of the compound. What it's doing is it's translating, you're just sacrificing a lot more handle movement for less jaw movement in order to increase the force, since it's that's just basic mechanics. I don't know about classes of levers, but somebody smarter than me could explain that. But I thought, man, these are a great set of pliers. One thing that's also interesting is since this jaw is on a pivot, what ends up happening is, you know, as you, oh, as you go to larger, they kind of want to form a V. So what they've done is they've kind of selected the middle ground. When you're in the closed position, you can see that the jaws are kind of like this, or in this lowest position. When you get up to, say, around the second or the third position we can see here now the jaws are parallel and when we're in the most wide position here the jaws are slightly beat out so they get around the fact that this jaw is on the pivot and wants to make kind of a v-shape what they've done is they've chosen the middle ground where the jaws are essentially close to parallel in the two middle positions here and here in the wide position they're just slightly uh, splayed outward and on the smallest position, they're slightly towed inwards. And I thought that was a nice com compromise and actually good attention to detail. And as I said, I think these two things would be even more amazing if they actually had this kind of jaw design that slip joints to have, where you just have a grabbing area in the front, kind of a, just a rough, uh, more open area in the center, and then the bypass cutters. This could have easily put in some bypass cutters on these, and they would have been super easy to use because of the compound action. So anyway, enough talking about these. Really was pretty stoked to have found these. Never really thought about this general purpose compound pliers, but now that I found this set, there's something I'm really gonna wanna use a lot just because you get enough force with these versus slip joints where if you wanna, you know, you can break bolts with these, not super torque bolts, but battery terminals and that type of stuff, more than enough gripping force to be able to grab onto the fastener and break it free it's the kind of thing where if you remember that say you're trying to loosen something you'd use them upside down like this because obviously as you the put more force on this upper handle is what's controlling the tightness of the pliers so if you are trying to loosen the fastener you use them like this grab a hold of the fastener and then as you're putting pressure to try to loosen it um, you're ensuring that you're keeping the pliers nice and tight and the more force that you're putting on to that moving handle, almost the tighter that they grip. The geometry isn't quite the same as like Nipex uh, wrench pliers, so you still have to have a little bit of tension on the fixed handle. You can't just press solely on the, move, the movable handle or the non-fixed handle to get them to attach, but it's close. I mean, as long as you're putting most of your pressure on this moving handle, they're just going to lock on. So I thought these things were pretty amazing. Really wanted to talk about them. These little nuts kind of get a little bit loose. But they generally seem to be okay. And I uh, just wanted to share with you all. And once again, I'll mention at the end here that the uh, easier set of pliers, of these pliers to find is going to be the Proto 234s versus the pendants 32 34s but once again kind of a tool from a bygone era and uh, would really like to see something like this in stores today you know there's been some designs over the years but nothing that's just been quite like this it's been quite as elegant as just some you know regular old straight pliers but in this case that happen to be compound and just give you a huge amount of gripping force. I mean, these things could be handy in so many situations where you just really need to get a good strong grip on something, pulling something, twisting things, etc. And then these bad boys just aren't going to slip with the amount of force that you can get on them. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. We'll see you next time.